Thank you very much for uh, all of you that uh, joined us at my uh, presentation on the award, uh, the, award the arbitration award on the South China Sea issues. Um, I'm sorry that I cannot speak any Spanish, but I try to make my presentation as understandable as possible, even for non-legal scholars like um, for most of, for most of you who are here. And well, first of all, let me just say that I'm truly honored and privileged to be here as a, a pre presenter for some of the issues that you might be interested in. And today, well, the, slightly unlike the, the title suggests, let me focus on some of the merits that the, the arbitration award on the South China Sea issues presented. And also, let me also focus on some of the implications that this award will have toward the, the regional security in Northeast, Northeast Asia and also some of the, the territorial dispute issues in some of the, uh, uh, surrounding some islands within this uh, uh, Northeast North Asian region. So let me just give you a brief outline of uh, how this uh, arbitration came into uh, existence. And I just got heard from the, uh, from the, the person here that the people from the Philippines and people from China already uh, gave you some uh, background information on their part on this uh, arbitration award. So let me briefly uh, I'll just wrap up some, some of the, the, the details of how it came about, how this arbitration uh, award came about. Uh, the, uh, the Chinese government started out asserting certain uh, historical rights around the South China Sea. They drew a theoretical uh, line named Nine Dash Lines. I'm, I, I, I'm confident that most of you uh, us, uh, at least have had a chance to have heard about it. But it's actually uh, draw the, the, the Nine, nine dash, dash Line draws a uh, theoretical line covering almost 90% of the South China Sea and the, China government, the Chinese government claims that those 90% of the South China Sea is actually the territorial uh, sea under the, under the sovereignty of the Chinese government and the neighboring nations including the Philippines, Vietnam, Taiwan and, and some other Asian, Asian nations have strongly uh, opposed to the Chinese claims. And the Philippines was the most vocal of all those uh, protesting nations. And they took the chance to file a claim against the Chinese uh, arguments to the, uh, the, 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 uh, the compulsory arbitration, compulsory dispute settlement mechanism under the United Nations Law of the Sea Convention. And that started in 2013, and in uh, responses, the Chinese government uh, um, claimed and argued that all the, all the sovereignty issues cannot be tried upon under the United, States, United Nations Law of the Sea regime. And that is actually true, because the Law of the Sea Convention only deals with the, the, the disputes, not uh, covering the, the, uh, the several issues between uh, nations. But then the, the, Philippine gov the, Philippine, the government of the Philippines was wise enough to uh, write down their, uh, write down their uh, suppositions, circumventing any of these, uh, any of these uh, sovereignty claims. They only, suggest, they only ask the, the arbitration courts to decide whether there are certain maritime features uh, such as islands, small islands, and those which wouldn't be classified as a territorial territory of any nation. So then some of the areas, some of the waters, some of the, the surrounding waters near the Philippine, uh, the, the nation of Philippines would be totally under the control of the Philippines. 
So then anything that China is doing in their uh, in their world, and surrounding waters would be in violation of the United, uh, the United Nations uh, Convention of the Convention on the Law of the Sea. Oh, by the way, if you think that you have uh, something that is that clear enough, please uh, feel free to uh, raise your hands so that I can answer your questions. I'm pretty uh, ready to answer any questions during the uh, presentation. But anyway, uh, in 2013, the Philippines have uh, filed the Philippines uh, filed the, the, the lawsuit against China uh, on the issue of the, the South China Sea territory issues, and China responded that the, 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 the arbitration tribunal does, wouldn't have any uh, jurisdiction on this issue. But the, in 2015, the, the arbitration tribunal decided that it had jurisdiction on these issues because the, um, the Philippines' uh, suppositions were not touching on any of the, the subject issues, uh, at least in its literal meaning. <coughs> so the, the, the arbitration, uh, court, arbitration tribunal just went on to decide on uh, the merits of the cases, and that award was uh, made in Ju uh, July 12th of this year. Um, let me just give you the, 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 the major findings of those uh, the arbitration award. The first thing is that they said that as the Philippines claimed there is no... <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me start off with, uh, by the decision on the, the nine nationalities because the Chinese had uh, strongly argued that they had legitimate claims on the South China Sea because they had some historical rights on the China, uh, South China Sea. They uh, cited some historical evidence dating back to early 16th centuries that some of the, the Chinese generals had uh, strong uh, control over those islands, over those uh, surrounding waters. But the arbitration or the arbitration uh, tribunal said that whatever the Chinese place uh, may, may have been, they are successfully um, uh, uh, they are successfully substituted when the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea came into force, and then China uh, succeeded to it in 1996. So even so, after the the argument was that after 1996 the Chinese claim would have lost their legitimacy because they have signed on to a new regime and then the rules on the new regime would um, regulate the Chinese activities in that region. So that was the first uh, uh, finding that yeah, the, the arbitration award gave to the, the South China Sea issue. And the second thing was that whether there are uh, some of the territories that Chinese claims as their own, that are actually not territories. It, so it may sound very uh, confusing and very awkward. So let me give you some uh, background information on the regime of Ireland under the Law of the Sea Convention. It's uh, stipulated under Article 121 that islands are the. <coughs> I'm sorry. Islands are the, the, the naturally formed uh, area of land that are surrounded by waters and also that are always above the high tide water, high tide. So to be, uh, to be classified as an island which are subject to the territorial claims, it has to be that it's, it, has, it has to be naturally formed, meaning that any kind of a, a human hands trying to just build upon uh, those some of the build upon those uh, maritime features wouldn't really count as the, as, as the, as the real island. And the second thing is that the article 121 uh, paragraph 3 also suggests or says that rocks that cannot sustain uh, human habitation or the, the Economic life of their own cannot, uh, shall not, uh, will not have uh, continental shelf or the, the uh, exclusive economic zone. 
what this means is that uh, if, uh, if you, even if you have something in the open sea, if, if it doesn't have, if it doesn't sustain, uh, if it doesn't have any population living in it, or if it, uh, if it cannot, uh, uh, lead, uh, if it cannot uh, sustain uh, um, economic economic activities that is not totally dependent upon the fisheries or the outside, uh, dependent on the outside resources, or if it, uh, if it's, uh, if it's only dependent on the mining activities, it cannot be classified as the island, so that it cannot claim any uh, territory, it cannot claim any economic, exclusive economic zones or uh, the, uh, continental shelf. And this is the argument that the arbitration uh, tribunal agreed with, because uh, some, many of the Chinese uh, claims on some of the maritime features in this, on this uh, South China Sea was either uh, strengthened by the human uh, uh, activities like artificial uh, uh, reclamation or the installation of some of the infrastructure on those uh, maritime features. So that removed the possibility that these uh, maritime features would be classified as the islands because for uh, certain maritime features to be classified as islands, it has to be naturally flown. And that was one thing, and also the, uh, the arbitration uh, court found that many of those uh, China, many of those maritime features under Chinese claims were not good enough to uh, maintain economic lives of their own, or they, that they were only dependent on uh, outside resources or mining activities. So that also removed the possibility that uh, these, islands, these American features would be classified as island under Chinese claims that uh, those areas uh, suddenly became uh, totally an uh, open sea and or the, 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 the surrounding waters within the regime of the, the exclusive economic zones under the Philippines. What this means is that whatever the Chinese did in those areas was actually uh, the violation of their uh, obligations not to uh, interfere with other countries' uh, legit legitimate activities within their own maritime, maritime zones. So the, the, the arbitration uh, tribunal went on to say that the Chinese government was in violation of the, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea by interfering with the, the Philippines' activities, trying to use uh, make use of their uh, resources within their exclusive economic zones. And that court also found that their uh, ex uh, reclamation efforts and also the installation of artificial uh, infrastructure within that region of constituted the, uh, the, the another violation of the, 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 the UN law of the convention, which is the um, duty to protect the marine environment within that region. So the government, that, so the arbitration court uh, decided that China was violating many of the provisions under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. And they, that the court also suggested that to be able to solve this issue permanently, uh, the contending parties, which are uh, the Philippines and also China, should start uh, bilateral negotiations as soon as possible so that they will arrive at a peaceful, uh, arrive at an agreeable solution uh, by peaceful means. So these are the wrap up of the, what the arbitration uh, tribunal said in, their, in, in its uh, findings. Does anyone have any questions so, so far? Then I will just continue to see what are the what are the what are the what are the following events after this arbitration award? Usually, when a court makes a case and decides upon this, on it, uh, the parties will 
likely follow the rulings and try to uh, comply with the rulings. But that is not what the Chinese government has chosen to do. Rather, Chinese government uh, started to act more aggressively by trying to um, set up more uh, artificial infrastructure in some of the, some of the other islands, in, uh, some of the other maritime features in this region. So that uh, worried the, the, the United States and also worried the, uh, the Philippine government and also the government of Indonesia. So the tension is really high still in this region and there is no uh, way inside of solving this issue uh, in any peaceful means. But let's just leave it at that and try to see whether the arbitration award has some implications for other territorial dispute issues in Northeast Asia. Because we have still uh, unsolved uh, territorial dispute issues among many of the nations. Let me start with the, the territorial uh, dispute that my, my country, Korea, has with Japan, which is called Tokto in Korean or Takeshima in Japanese uh, territorial dispute. Um, two, two nations have been uh, claiming their uh, own, claiming their uh, sovereignty on these two uninhabited uh, maritime features for a long time. And if we, as, as I briefly uh, outlined before, if we take the arbitration awards findings as fine as authoritative and as a precedent for the. Uh, for the, the, uh, the, for the other uh, possible legal uh, proceedings, chances are that the Tokyo or Takeshima will be classified as not as an island, not as an island, but as a rock, which wouldn't have any uh, maritime uh, zones uh, by itself. So the economic value that these uh, these islands will have will be uh, significantly uh, decreased. So that there is no, there's not going to be much merit between these two, uh, these governments to still uh, argue over the sovereignty issues in those uh, in those in uninhabited areas. But uh, what is actually uh, more at stake is the, the nationalist sentiment between these two nations. They are not many, many, uh, much of the population in these nations are not interested in is finding, uh, taking, making use of economic value that these uninhabited islands can have for each country. They are still um, arguing for their nationalistic uh, pride in having those islands under each of their, those nations' control. So if we say that there are some Koreans that uh, tend to believe that uh, this, is, uh, this should be, this, uh, these two these uninhabited islands should be called Takeshima. He would rather have pack, uh, pack his belongings. He would rather pack his belongings and leave the country because once his voice was heard by uh, the people surrounding him, he, uh, those people would start uh, persecuting him by any, any possible means. Uh, by any possible means. And it would be the same with the Japanese uh, people, although the intensity of the nationalistic uh, uh, voices are slightly less in, the, in Japan's case. Anyway, uh, if we take the arbitration awards findings here and try to apply that to the Tokyo Island case, chances are that we will have less uh, reasons, uh, 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 fewer reasons to argue over those islands because of the less than the economic value surrounding those islands, but it would be a little bit of uh, uh, a challenge if we just get out and just speak out what is uh, true under the United Nations Convention, the law of the sea conventions, because nationalist, nationalistic uh, sentiment issues always um, <coughs> prevails over some of the other um, legitimate concerns. So that is my uh, cautious uh, conclusion surrounding the, the, uh, the, the Tokyo or Takeshima Island issues. And we also have two other interesting uh, territorial dispute issues. So uh, one, and the, the first one is the 
the, the territory of dispute between Japan and China, which are over Senkaku Rento uh, in Japanese terms or Diao Yu Dai in Chinese terms. These are uh, a group of uh, the maritime features, features that are mostly uninhabited, but uh, they have some strategic value because they will, if they can, are able to have some <coughs> So claim, if, if they are able to claim some of the maritime um, zones like exclusive economic zones or uh, continental shelf, it would vastly um, expand the, 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 the claiming government's um, economic, economic uh, benefit that can, that can come out of those uh, zones. And for now, Japan has uh, an effective control over those islands, but Chinese are strongly uh, uh, in a, uh, protesting the Japanese government's claim that they are the legitimate owners of those maritime features. And just like the Tokyo Island issue, if we apply the same uh, logic to the uh, Senkaku Reto or the Yaoyudai uh, Island issues, Chances are that these islands, and these maritime features, will lose their uh, status as as an island, and then they will be reduced to some of the rocks. They won't have any uh, exclusive economic zones or territory or, or, or continental shelf. So then, as we be the Tokyo Island issue, it will uh, significantly lessen the value of the value of just uh, continuing to control those. Uh, Maritime futures. But with the Dr. Island issues, there's still nationalistic uh, sentiment issues or, or, uh, prevails or, or around, surrounding these islands. So I'm not sure if any kind of easy solutions could come out of it, if, even if we apply the, uh, the, the findings of the arbitration award as a kind of a precedent. And the third and the last one is the uh, very interesting case. Uh, uh, surrounding certain maritime features under the Japanese control, which is called Okino Torishima. These are actually not even an island, not, not even a rock, uh, rock. These are uh, the, the, the coral reefs or, or atoll <coughs> in scientific terms that are sometimes submerged in, uh, 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 below the high tides of the, the sea water. So technically, they are called. Uh, Low, low tide feature, meaning that they won't be able to claim any uh, maritime zones like exclusive, exclusive economic zones or this uh, territory or continental shelf. Or even they won't be able to have uh, 12 mile territorial <laughs> waters because they are not classified as either, that cannot, cannot be classified as either uh, an island <coughs> or a rock. They will only have a certain value as to just uh, to set up some uh, <coughs> scientific uh, infrastructure or some lighthouses to help uh, the passing passing vessels navigate safely. So, if you apply that to these uh, these uh, <coughs> chances are that uh, this will be this island and uh, this maritime feature will uh, lose its economic value totally. But what the Japanese government is doing around this uh, toll is that they set up uh, uh, artificial is, uh, installations above those side, above those maritime feature, and also it did make uh, serious efforts to uh, uh, reclaim these uh, tolls so that it would have certain uh, uh, appearance of being on the island. They just even set up uh, certain installations so that even the, the, some of the, the helicopters can land on some of those uh, areas. But if we apply the arbitration awards findings on this uh, maritime feature, uh, the, there is not much to claim around this, so around this, uh, around this uh, maritime feature. So, uh, to just sum up what I have suggested so far is that uh, it's, it's just that uh, 
arbitration award have some implications for reducing the economic values of some of the, the disputed territorial areas in, in Northeast Asia. Although I have to be careful in saying this because, uh, the, as I mentioned before, the, the nationalistic sentiment always prevails over any other uh, legitimate uh, concerns or claims on this uh, territorial interest. So let me just go back to uh, the, 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 let me just go back and say that although the uh, as a conclusion, that the, the arbitration awarding on the South China Sea issue was a great uh, example of just possibly solving the territorial disputes. Nationalist sentiment will always prevail, may, may prevail over any uh, legitimate concerns on, the, on those uh, disputed uh, territorial issues so that the, so that the disputes may just continue to uh, sizzle even, with, uh, even after this um, arbitration award. So these are my uh, presentations and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, with it uh, on this topic. Thank you.